Hello everybody, this is our experiment uh, where we look at spectroscopy, uh, the subject matter is spectroscopy. As you know from studying the, the Bohr atom and the Schrodinger atom, um, you, you, you essentially have a positively charged nucleus in atoms, and uh, you have uh, specific energy levels allowed which I'll draw as these orbitals, figuratively. Uh, in each orbital, you're allowed two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. Um, but I'll just draw uh, this, I'm just gonna draw this electron here, a single electron in this, say, first orbital. So if you, if you have a, a, a gas of an atom, like a helium gas, a hydrogen gas, a, a sodium vapor, uh, or a, a mercury vapor, um, what, what you do is you, you put the gas inside of a, a discharge tube, which is just like a, a glass tube with the gas inside, and you have electrodes uh, through the glass, and if you put a high voltage on there, oscillate, it has to be oscillating voltage, um, you'll get electrons streaming through the gas. Now the reason why this has to be AC here is, is specific because if you just put a DC voltage on an electrode in a gas, you'll get what's called a Faraday sheath around the electrode. Uh, so if you put a positive voltage on this electrode, if, if you have an electrode here charged positive, uh, it, it will immediately ionize, uh, collect negative charge around the electrode, and by Gauss's law, the electric field here will be zero because it's called a Faraday sheath from the gas, so the electric field out here will be zero if it's DC. So by making it AC, you, 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 you shed the Faraday sheath off the electrode, and, and the, electrons, uh, the high voltage uh, discharge of electrons through the gas can occur. So that's why this is an AC voltage as opposed to a DC voltage. Um, anyways, of course, you can get the streamer, streamer of electrons started through here by making these points sharp. If you have a sharp point, you know, the electric field in the neighborhood of the point goes like the voltage, is a proportional of the voltage over the diameter of the point. So you can get a very high field here to get the streaming uh, lightning bolt of electrons through here uh, with the sharp point electrodes. But anyways, that's a little bit of plasma physics theory there, or experimentalism for you there. But anyways, essentially in an atom, you're gonna have a, um, a positively charged nucleus, and if you put this gas of atoms in a discharge tube, you're gonna you're gonna have electrons. I'll, I'll make this elect. I'm gonna call this an E. Uh, maybe I'll make that like a a purple uh, because it, it's it came from the, the the electrode. Another electron can come shooting into the gas and say have a collision with an electron, say in the in the first orbital of this this atom, which has a positive nucleus and negatively charged electrons in orbitals. This streaming electron through, from the gas discharge from these electrodes comes in, collide with this electron and knock it out to a higher orbital, a higher energy orbital. And then that electron can fall back to its original orbital and under and, and go a change in energy of delta E and this change in energy is the difference in the potential energy from here to here. And then once that happens, a photon is emitted. Uh, this is a photon, uh, gamma symbol for photon. A photon gets emitted. So in the gas discharge tube, um, discharge electrons go, go zooming through the gas, collide with electrons in, and this is a whole atom here. The electron, the, this, this electron, gets knocked out to a higher energy orbital, and then as it falls back in, it emits a photon or a particle of light. And the energy of, of the photon, the energy of the, the, the uh, energy difference from this state to this state is equal to the energy of the emitted photon And that's equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength of the emitted photon.
okay? Which is also equal to Planck's constant times the frequency that emit a photon. So let's say, for instance, um, I have hydrogen gas or, or a sodium vapor in this discharge tube. Remember, this has to be AC so that you don't get the Faraday sheath problem on the electrodes. Uh, let's say I have sodium vapor in here. And, and so this will be a sodium nucleus. And these will be the indigenous energy levels of sodium with their electrons occupying the states uh, of sodium. The, the, the gas discharge, the, the, the discharge from the uh, electrode that goes shooting through the gas will excite an electron to a higher energy orbital. It'll fall back in and emit a photon. Now, this energy difference here is specific say from the first, the lowest, uh, uh, say from this uh, uh, lowest energy state uh, orbital to the next available orbital, that energy difference will be a signature of, say, sodium. Now, the, first ex the, fir the ground state to the first excited state for hydrogen, that number energy difference will be different for helium or hydrogen or mercury. So what happens is, if I have sodium gas in here, then the wavelengths, the wavelengths of emitted photons will be specific to sodium. Discrete wavelengths will come out of a gas discharge tube of sodium. Now, of course, you can go from the first level to the second and fall back in. You could, you could, you could go from the first level to the, 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 the third level and fall all the way back or you can fall back part way and then part way again. And each, the energy difference between orbiter levels are, are, are different uh, uh, for each atom in the periodic table. So what we want to do is we want to put in a, uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna put in a known gas in here. We're gonna know that it's sodium. And um, we, we know the, 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 the colors or wavelengths of light that sodium vapor emits. And then we're going to use that to calibrate our instrument because we know it's sodium. And then we'll put in other gases after the instrument's calibrated. We'll put in other gases and look at their, uh, their emission spectrum. We'll, we'll look for specific lines. I'll go over that uh, uh, in, in a minute. Let me, let me talk about the apparatus here. Uh, so let me erase. Let me erase this, and we'll talk about uh, 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 a, the apparatus uh, here. Let me erase this stuff here. Okay. Uh, how how are we going to measure these wavelengths? Well, let me. Uh, we'll we'll have this gas discharge tube here. Here's here's the glass tube. And there'll, there'll be uh, different colors coming out of the tube. And then we'll have a collimating slit here, a collimating slit, which will grab a, you know, it, it, instead of getting the spray, we'll get like a more unified, uh, 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 tight a beam of light coming through, a mixture of colors. So this is a collimating slit. Okay. Okay, then, um, we're going, to, we're going to have some focusing lenses in here, which I'll show you, but I'm going to leave them out here for simplicity. We'll, we'll then have a, 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 a diffraction grating, and the uh, different colors will come out of here. Figuratively, let's say you have a, like a, a, a shorter wavelength, which I'll make blue, coming out, and, and say a longer wavelength which will be like a more a reddish, more reddish light coming out. These will come out of there. And then when they hit the grating, um, the, uh, 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 the, the, the shorter wavelength light, and say this is the optic axis here, um, the shorter wavelength light, the blue light, say, will we'll get its, first principle um, maximum, say, at that angle, and say then, then the, uh, the, the redder, longer wavelengths will come out at a, a wider angle. Now, we're going we're gonna to look at this along an arc here, so a wider angle. And by measuring 
by, me by, by measuring these angles, say, let's say, uh, by measuring this angle here, by measuring this angle, uh, this angle being half of that entire angle, we will be able to determine the wavelengths of the light from standard interference theory that you already know. Um, and those equations are in your in your book. Then, so what we're going to do along along this track here, we'll have a light sensor, a light sensor, which will measure. You know, the intensity of the light will go go way up when it sees a, a, a spike, a, a, a maximum here. And that light sensor will be on the same track as we use in the black body experiment. That light sensor will be slightly different. It'll only be, um, it, it'll only look at a narrow range of wavelengths and, and the, the reds and the blues uh, uh, from, you know, very narrow, as the, the black body sensor could look at many wavelengths from long infrared and the, sh the shorter UV. This one will be, be, have a narrower bandwidth where it, it sees light, but bef and in front of it is also a, an aperture uh, set uh, slit. There's an aperture slit in front of the sensor. So I'll put that here. This is the aperture slit. Okay, so what we'll do is, the first thing we'll do is we'll put sodium in here and we'll look for the, the, the uh, we'll look for the uh, wavelengths that we know sodium has, and that will tell us that how to cal that'll calibrate our instrument to know that the angle, the predicted angle for sodium is also what our instrument measures. Um, so over here, I have some settings for the experiment. Now, we will put in, uh, 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 we'll turn, we will turn on the discharge lamp will be the sodium vapor lamp initially, and sodium has a doublet, in other words, it has a specific wavelength that comes out at 589 nanometers and 589.6 nanometers. Now, our, our uh, instrument cannot really see the difference between, so we're going to see a, a blob at about 589.3, um, which is the average of these two numbers. And this will be the pr first principal maximum coming out. Um, the settings on the, the instrument for this experiment. The collimating slit will be at setting one, aperture slit setting one. The gain switch will be at 10. Now that's the actual uh, gain of, you know, when the, when the light hits this photovoltaic material and pops electrons off and creates an electric uh, uh, current that's called a photo current because the, the motion of electrons through the circuit is, is caused by the collision of the photons with the photovoltaic material. That, the gain switch will be a factor of 10. Now the software can also has a gain, in other words, how many data points it's taking over the range of uh, delta theta values that you're scanning through. Um, that, and that, the software gain for that measurement will be on the low setting, that's in the software. Then after we, after we confirm that our, our instrument is, is, is seeing these uh, this, 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 this wavelength at the correct angle, then we know our instrument is calibrated. We will then put in other, uh, over here, in, in, instead of having a sodium vapor in here, in this tube, we'll put the hydrogen gas, and we just change out the tubes, and the hydrogen um, will, uh, has specific wavelengths because its energy levels and its atomic structure are different. And it'll put out a red, a blue, green, an indigo, a violet with these specific wavelengths given in nanometers. Um, and the settings on, on the apparatus will be the collimating slit at three, after slit at one, the gain switch, electronic gain will be 100 for, for all the lines except the red. It, it'll be the gain switch will be set at 10 for the, the, the red line only. The software gain will be on the setting of high. And um, by the way, if I can cut in and yes. explain the difference between yeah. the yeah. hardware gain and yeah. software yes, gain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the hardware gain is basically it's an amplifier gain. It's like uh, you are changing the amplification factor in the sensor. Uh, and using a higher gain allows us to measure uh, smaller intensities, like more faint lines. And 
and using a lower gain allows us to actually measure high intensities because otherwise you are going to saturate the sensor if the, uh, if the gain is too high the sensor is going to saturate the signal is going to go over the maximum and software gain, gain is kind of similar but what it does in the interface there is a analog to digital converter so basically you are getting an analog signal from the photovoltaic uh, cell yeah from the sensor and then this analog signal you take this analog signal and then uh, you put a maximum on it for example let's say the signal is between 0 to uh, 6 volts and and you say you look at only between 0 to 1 volts and then after you do that you divide that by let's say 10 bits which is 1024 data points so this is an analog to digital converter so for like a 10 bit analog to digital converter there are 2 to the 10 which is uh, 1024 uh, data points so by changing software gain you basically say what's the voltage range that you are looking are you looking from 0 to 1 volts let's say that's low uh, that's a high setting or are you looking from 0 to 10 volts let's say that's a medium setting and are you looking at from 0 to 100 volts that's going to be a low gain setting for the software and uh, the advantage of setting the low gain is so that uh, you can actually uh, you can uh, analyze like larger voltages or larger values Right, right but then you lose resolution so lose if you want to yeah. if you want to increase the resolution you say uh high software gain but that kind of limits your uh voltage uh, maximum so right, right. all right so that was oh, okay thank you that's thank you for clarification uh, a mercury vapor uh discharge gas discharge is going to have a yellow doublet um we'll probably see both of these uh in in the sensor uh, but we'll, we'll, instead of looking at the M equal 1, we'll look at the M equal 2 line. Because, you know, as they come out, as, you, as, you, as they come out, if you go out this way more, it's like, say there's an M equal 1 and then further out, bigger angle, theta, M equal 2. Maybe you can show them on, on your... Maybe you can show them on your... Yeah, so like if you had a yellow, uh, uh, let's say you had, uh, let's, let's erase this here. Um, let me erase these dots. Let's say in the, um, I'll make this purple. Let's say uh, I don't have a. Uh, I know, I don't think we have a yellow. We don't have a yellow marker, do we? That's okay. But, anyways, say, say for the. Um, uh, in the mercury, you're, you're going to have a. a uh, uh, I'll make it black. You're going to have a yellow. Uh, it's a yellow greenish looking thing coming out of here. And say the, the first maximum, say, comes out at this angle. And you've got a, a dot there and a dot there, and it's the, it's the, the 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 one right next to it is coming out here, and and these dots look like they're on top of each other, right? And so this is the m equal one; they look like they're on top of each other. If you go to the m equal two, it's going to come out over here, and this angle is bigger. Th th this 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 angle is bigger, so those dots are going to get further apart. So you'll be able to resolve them. See, right. And, and if you look at the, let's say this is the M equal two uh, mercury yellow yellow doublet, mm -hmm. and this is the M equal one. First order, the dots are going to be closer. M equal two, we're going to be able to resolve them apart. Yeah, good point. And that's the reason why we're going to we're going to look at the second order uh, for higher resolution, and so we can get the spreading to happen. Uh, the collimating slit will be at one. After slit will be at one. Gain switch will. Electronic gain at 10, software gain is medium. And then when we look at the helium gas discharge tube, we've got a lot more lines. Um, and since there's, there's more colors, the energy is being spread out into more states. So each state that's coming out of this is going, or each wavelength state is a term you hopefully use, you'll, you'll be using a lot in lecture. Um, each state or wavelength is going to have less energy, so less intensity. So that's why the gain switch will be at 100 here, electronic gain. Software gains at medium, collimating slit absolutely at 1. You'll see those settings up when we go look at the instrument. But anyways, these colors will come out of the helium gas, and they have specific wavelengths, which, and each wavelength will, will be seen at specific angles in the spectrometer. So let's, let's walk over here 
and, and look at the instrument. Did you want to add anything to that, uh, Dr. Estrogen? And for hydrogen, uh, so for we have four lines in the Rydberg spectrum. And for the red line, we are going to use a different gain switch setting. That's because the red line's intensity is uh, Brighter, higher yeah, than higher. the other lines. For example, the violet line, you can barely see with naked eye for the hydrogen. Uh, it's very faint, uh, but the red line is stronger. So for that one, we are going to reduce the gain switch. If you don't do that, then it's going to saturate our reading. It's and these, these, the top. these numbers and settings are also in your lab manual. Yeah, exactly. Just want to we like to do a little lecture format for you. So, uh, in that case, I'm going to stop this first video, which was introduction. And the next video is going to describe, basically, the setup of the apparatus and the software. Um, should, we, should we stop the video and then... Because I think uh, it's okay. going to cut off soon. So, so okay. let's, let's okay. have a separate video okay. for the okay. Okay. Um, apparatus setup.